What's going on, Nick? We're switching out some servos. The old triple seven plus is starting to get a little tired. Uh, probably have guessing 150 flights on them now, if not more. Maybe it's a very broad guess, uh, but they're starting to feel a little laggy. I've, I've noticed that, like when I was doing my snaps, that even with the gyro off, it was bobbling, like they just they were tired. So, and everyone's saying if I even have that many flights on it, then yeah, they're probably done. So we're actually switching to. Uh, well, they're not done. They're just done for this application, right? Yeah. We yeah, we're probably, gonna put them in something else. We can probably put them in something smaller. Yep. Um, that doesn't require as much torque. Yeah. So it's still good to have them as backups. We're not going to throw them away. Yeah, no, they ran good. Yeah. But then we have, uh, so we're going to the Potenza's 49010s. This is what Chris Barton really recommends, especially with the Aura. Uh, it's what he uses on all his builds, and it seems to be working really well. Okay. So if he recommends it, then they're probably good. Yeah. So I'm also really hoping that I get better battery life with them. Because with the MKS, I was getting on a 2800 milliamp battery, I was getting maybe three flights max. Yeah. And so I'm hoping if I can get like upwards of six flights on a battery, like I'd be pretty happy, yeah. which is possible because these triple sevens and MKSs. Yeah, just less cycles on the battery they, too. Oh yeah, I mean like, but also like the MKS has always been known to be power hogs. Yep. Uh, they just drain a lot, a lot of power. Yeah, good servos, but uh, definitely you gotta have the right servo for the right application, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Which I, these were great to start out with, uh, but yeah, now we're trying something different. Awesome. Let's get it done. change in the batteries a little more forward cg nick that's what we're trying to go for dad thinks it's a uh, really touchy so i mean honestly with this airplane when it's a far back cg it's a very aggressive airplane so if that's your kind of flying then it's actually really really fun how it is but dad's the one that's mostly flying this one so he, he doesn't need it as crazy aggressive so a little bit more nose weight help calm it down a little bit hopefully it, yeah, help you like that a lot more yeah i think so you know what's funny nick that you know it's it's a science isn't it i mean you can't just throw a plane together and expect it to fly perfect no you really got to work on on throws and cg and and sometimes it's just pfm yeah sometimes it is <laughs> because honestly that's how most of my time is because i have no idea what the hell i'm doing i just have like I have a slight theory on how airplanes are supposed to work. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to try to apply that. Yeah. But most of the time it doesn't work. So. Well, but we know when something needs to be fixed, though, don't we? Yeah. And uh, playing around with the CG. Not every airplane is just, even if it's the same brands, the CG doesn't work in the same airplane, does it? No. No. And that's also why when you get a brand new airplane, the, uh, the manufacturer will always put where the CG is supposed to be. Uh, About. They, use, they usually measure it from the. Uh, the spar yeah so that's usually always a great place to start um for every airplane that you're getting to uh, unless you know someone else that's built that airplane says oh do this right um always just follow what that recommended cg point is and, and then would, start manipulating it from there absolutely if you're trying to get the plane to feel a little more solid and, and not as aggressive put the way forward if you want that want it a lot more aggressive move the way back yeah um that's so tail heavy airplane is aggressive it can be. You'll and have a nose heavy airplane is stable. For the most part. Right. Um, and sometimes that theory can be wrong. Um, it's, again, don't depends think. on the type of airplane. Type of airplane and how you fly. So everything when it comes to me saying this, take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. Because um, I'm still learning it as I'm going. You, there's probably people listening to me talk right now be like, nope, you're completely wrong. And no, no, you're not, you're not wrong. I mean, aeronautical science states that a nose heavy airplane is more stable, but it doesn't mean it's better, does it? I mean, no. if you're, especially when you're flying 3D, sometimes more stable is not exactly what you want. 
Well, it depends on what you're trying to get out of the airplane. Right. Um, if you're trying to be extremely aggressive 3D and get that tail to really wrap around, um, then you're going to want that tail weight. You're going to want that tail heaviness, so, yeah. And some some people have like a certain amount to like, say you're doing like a, uh, a tail slide, so where you're like a knife edge and you slide it around. Right. Um, if you have it too tail heavy, it might want to just continue around farther than you want it to. Right, so it over rotates it a little bit. It over rotates. So yeah. having a little bit more nose weight, even though it's still an aggressive plane, is going to get that solution where you can still rotate it as much as you want and stop rubbing your Now also, tell our viewers, I mean, that airplane has probably 150 plus flights on it doesn't it yeah and isn't it now just starting to get dialed in and that's mostly through my inexperience okay um i i'd say someone that was more experienced experience like chris barton built that airplane i'd probably be set up the first time he did it without even having to do a test flight yeah and that just comes from experience and how like knowing how these airplanes fly and how to set them up beautifully so the moral of the story is don't give up try to minute try to work with your airplane right yeah. don't think don't don't just say oh it flies like crap and give up this plane's always going to be crap. Right. So there's always things you can try to do. And now that's not, again, every airplane is different. Right. You could have an airplane that just flies like crap. Right. Um, but always, you can always try to manipulate things and try to set it up a little bit better and to get it to fly what you think is good. Right. And based on how you fly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's good advice. And now, I mean, now here at uh, Freedom Fest, your plane really started getting locked in. And then we realized we need to change out your... Aileron servos. And, and again, I probably should have picked up on my aileron silver sooner. Yeah. Um, but it just comes from not realizing what a crappy servo or a worn out servo is starting to feel like. Right. Um, hopefully in the next couple of years, I'll be flying better and better airplanes and knowing what a good airplane is supposed to feel like will get me that like, oh, yeah, something's wrong here. I need to fix it. But as soon as you put the better servos in, you noticed right away, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah. it took me a long time on trying to actually get to that point of realizing these servos are bad yeah and we're not we're not saying that the servos are bad it's just they've been flying in this airplane for 150 plus flights and it's a large model yeah, those we bought those servos used and so they were used not telling how many flights it has on the other airplanes. yeah that's right that's right well, that's good stuff so now we're going to try it again we're going to move the cg forward we're putting bigger batteries in that's how we're moving the cg forward and Ryan, how's your plane flying? Uh, pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I have uh, no issues. Yeah. No issues. Everything feels good. Do you fly tail heavy or nose heavy? Uh, more nose heavy. Do you? Yeah. So you like well, to my have batteries that. are forward. Yeah, you like to have that stability. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we used to have it always. It always was tail heavy, but not right. Heavy. Goal that a lot of people are going to say is they want neutral CG. Yeah, it's got so it's going to they try to get it to where your feeling is going to be neutral CG as much as possible, right? Uh, but in 3D, that's not always yeah. best. Well, right? and, and when, we, when I'm saying more nose heavy, it doesn't mean that the plane is going to be nose heavy, it just means I put more work towards the nose to try to get it closer. You know, that's a good point, Nick. We're talking about micro adjustments here, aren't we? Yeah, we're not talking about really moving the CG I'm more than like five pounds on the nose, right right we're just micro adjusting it and it's it's funny on these models how those micro adjustments can make such a big difference because they don't weigh anything right so but an experienced pilot be able to look fly at once and be like oh yeah i know what it needs but at least maybe people watching this will realize how important cg is you gotta have cg if not you're playing and never fly oh, that's up, right man? hey buddy how you What's doing up, good to see you how are you <laughs> Good to see What's you, up, man. How are you? How you been? Doing good. So we're just trying to manipulate a little bit of the CG here on the Raven. It's not flying like it should. Tail heavy or nose heavy? It's it's little tail heavy. Uh, it wraps around a lot, and the tail is like really unstable. It's really really touchy. So I'm hoping just moving some weight forward will help slide the batteries a further. Yeah. And put in slightly heavier ones. I'm going from 2,000 to 4,000. Slide your tank up any? Probably. Strat Actually, we haven't here. We haven't done that. Probably could. I'm gonna see what these batteries do. And then if I need more, then I'll probably I'll probably slide the tank up. Just go see you guys. Keep adding Likewise. <laughs> you here for the whole week? Yes, sir. Awesome, man.
What do you think, man? I no, wait a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. set those off tonight. Uh, we're test moon limits. We're here. not putting them on RC aircraft to arm the RC aircraft. Nope. No, not one bit. We're I'm not, gonna launch it. We're not doing that. We're 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 we're. I still have all ten fingers. 
So I'm leaving tonight. Ryan's sticking out for tomorrow because yeah, they've got a massive raffle here this weekend. They're giving away an RV8 turnkey airplane with motor, controller, already fl already test flown servos in it with a 12 foot trailer. A 12 foot trailer. So he's got to stay. I mandated it because I bought some tickets and I'm already going to win it. He knows that. Yeah. So it's unfortunate, but he's going to stick around to win my trailer for me. Um, and then we've got, uh, they've got a JR radio that they're uh, doing a raffle on. They've got a 51 inch slick. Uh, turnkey, night right? flyer. Night, fly, night fire lights. Sets of XL lights. XL lights. And, uh, oh, uh, and they've got another full turnkey airplane. Don't yes, they? the Extreme Fly, I don't know its size, but the Raven. 76 cc 76 cc raven yeah so an rv8 so thank you extreme flight an extreme flight 76 cc raven yes and uh and a trailer a 12 foot trailer i mean that's an incredible raffle we've never seen a raffle like that before have yeah, we it's, 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 freedom fest 2024 did it real right this is their second annual event um chris barton and chris prince chris this barton on. Chris Prince. Yep. Uh, Chris Barton, thank you so much for everything you've yeah, done. Yeah, and Chris this Prince. Is, Barton, Barton and Prince did a great job. Up. Great job. Uh, it was a great showing. We had a lot of uh, good flyers here. Every, everybody was having a good time. It's a little hot. You see, I'm still sweating. Oh, man, the sweat sweat. 10 o'clock at night. It's still hot. Sweat. Chris, Chris, come here. Hey, Chris. We need you, buddy. This is Chris Prince. This is uh, one of the gentlemen put on it's the Freedom dad. Fest 2024. This is my dad. Yeah, they, say, they say it looks like his dad. But uh, Chris, awesome job. <laughs> Chris also owns Wild Child Graphics. Yeah, yep. Most of the airplanes you see out here that you'll see in the video were done by this gentleman right here. So, Wild Child, what's your website address? It's Facebook. Okay, Facebook. What's Wild Facebook? Child Graphics. He's Perfect. got a little Facebook. Facebook. Easy. Wild Child Graphics. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Some of the best graphics we've seen on these airplanes. Uh, contact Chris. He'll hook you up. But Chris, great event, man. Yes, sir. Fantastic event. Yes, sir. Truly Anytime, appreciate brother. it. Hey, you be good, and we'll see you at the next event. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, All right. Sir. Thanks, Chris. Yes, sir. All right, so that's it for Ryan and Mark. Uh, Nick already left. He's already went home. You saw that. But uh, By the way, Mark yeah. flew today, and he did an incredible job. I. So what he means to say is I didn't crash. <laughs> Yeah. That's good. Yeah, well, it counts. That's good. Hey, we're it getting counts. better. We're it getting counts, better. but he flew and he did great. That's right. We figured out his plane and he did fantastic. We're figuring out the plane. We figured it's it. Getting better. It's getting better. Look, thank you very much. We love all of you for uh, subscribing and liking the channel. Please comment uh, if you have anything to say. We try to answer all of them. From Ryan and Mark and Hobby Extreme, we'll see you at the next event. Love you Take guys. Take care.